Okay, so before we start this video, I'd like to just mention that the channel is approaching 10k subscribers. It's quite exciting, and to thank you guys and also answer some of your questions, I'm going to do a Q&A video when I reach 10k. It'll be probably the day after or two days after. I'll, I'll do it as soon as I can afterwards. Uh, I need to collect up questions from you lot, so if you want to leave questions either on my YouTube uh, community discussions page, I've made a post there, you can respond to that with your questions. Or equally, on Twitter, I've also made a tweet about it, you can respond to that, and I'm going to gather all those up and make a video of that. So I hope you guys look forward to that. I'm looking forward to it. Now let's get to the video. So the other night I was scrolling through YouTube, looking through the glorious content that the YouTube algorithm has recommended me. And there I see it, a video by Dapper Dan And there I see it, a video by Vsauce. You all know Vsauce, you love him. Everyone loves Vsauce. Hey, Vsauce, Michael here. He does videos on uh, logical problems and just, you know, asking yourself questions that you thought you might have known the answer to, but you actually don't. And he did a video on the Monty Hall problem. So the Monty Hall problem got its name from the game show host, Monty Hall, who hosted a game show called Let's Make a Deal. And we're not going to go into the entire thing about the game show, but basically, um, when it came to getting a prize, there were three doors. And behind two of those doors were goats. Um, that's meant to be something you don't want. I know a lot of people who probably want a pet goat, but regardless, there's two things you don't want. And behind the other door, the third door, was a car or money or the, the prize, essentially. And it doesn't really matter the specifics for this. It's just, you know, you have three things and behind one of them is the thing you want. Uh, you can do this with playing cards. Uh, I had a teacher at school that showed us this and he used three playing cards. He had uh, two red aces and a black ace. And obviously you didn't know what was on the other side and you had to pick one. Now, you know, you've got one in free chance, right, of getting the one that you want. One in three, it's pretty simple, 33.3 recurring percent. Everyone gets that, that's done any basic maths. And that seems that seems pretty simple. But then the thing that makes it a bit more complicated with probability uh, is the fact that after you've selected your choice and you said, yep, I wanna pick door number one, then the game show host knows what's behind every door. So then they reveal to you one of the doors. And that one they reveal is obviously not gonna be the prize because then you just pick that one. Uh, they reveal to you one of the non-prizes, one of the goats. And there are two different scenarios there. Either they, re if you've picked the right one originally, then they can pick either of the other two to show you. Doesn't matter because they're both goats. Whereas if you pick a, pick a goat to uh, begin with, then he's got to show you the one remaining goat because obviously we showed you the other one and it would be the win and it's, yeah. Anyway, so how it works is you pick one then he shows you one of the other goats, assuming there's two or, you know, if there's only one, then I'll show you that goat. And then he asks you, do you wish to change your answer? You know, do you want to stay on the one you uh, started with? Do you want to stay with your gut instinct? Or do you want to change to the other option? Because obviously I've shown you a goat, so that other one, you know, it's a 50-50, right? So this is where people change their thought process. They think, well, um, okay, so he's got rid of one of the bad ones. So now there's a good one and a bad one left. So it's 50-50 and everyone seems to agree it's 50-50 chance, right? You know, if you stay or change, it doesn't make a difference. It's just up to luck and your gut instinct, right? You're gonna get a 50-50 chance either staying or changing, but that's wrong. That's where that's where this video comes in, okay? So we've had people, um, obviously I saw it on Vsauce. He explained the problem very well and I'm gonna link that below. There's plenty of explanations on the problem. And I thought, you know, as a, as a nerdy programmer that I am, I, I wanted to make, a simulation of it because it's got an old saying um, that it's 50-50 or not and whatever and yeah you could go test it out you know 10 times before you get bored in real life on paper or with cards but I thought well what are computers good at obviously they're good at doing a lot of things very quickly so it'd be pretty cool to write a little program that would simulate the uh, game I guess and then we can actually see and record the statistics on what the outcome is to see whether it is one in three or 50-50 or whatever, right? So I thought I'd show you some Python code I've written and you guys can obviously try and make it as well yourself if you want. It's not gonna be a line by line tutorial. I just thought I'd show you it and it's kind of interesting. So yeah, let's get to the code. Okay, so of course as programmers, we start off by writing the most important part of our program, which in this case is gonna be the menu. So for our menu, we're gonna keep it relatively simple, which is gonna have, you know, different options to go to the different parts of the menu. So for the next part of the video, I recommend you slow it down so you can comprehend what I'm doing. This is a trick I learned back when I was in high school learning computer science. So just bear with me. Is to go even further beyond. Now I'm not quite sure if you guys got it the first time, so watch carefully. So there we have it. We've added a beautiful border. Now I'm gonna quickly go and add a title. So now that we're done with the menu, we can focus on the less important things like, you know, adding functionality to the menu, writing the simulation, outputting the results on a graph, you know, yada, yada. 
So as you guys can see, I made a helper function for taking an integer input because in Python, it's a bit annoying. You know, if you just type in anything you want, it crashes. So I wrote this, we're gonna use it a few times. You know, we're gonna basically say, oh yeah, uh, try getting their input as an integer. If it's wrong, then politely let them know to enter another thing, try number this time. Otherwise, we just return what they said. And that's pretty useful. Now we can use that in the menu. Okay, so what I've done here is I define the possible menu options and we set their choice to negative one. And obviously negative one's like the invalid option. Then basically while their choice is not in this list, we get them to keep entering their choices using the function I wrote up here. Pretty simple things. At this point, we've got their menu choice. The next thing to do is actually write the logic for the simulation. But after we've actually simulated, we're gonna to want to return to the menu. So we'll just say, you know, recursively call the menu at the end so we can get back to the start. So for the simulation, we're gonna use classes because classes are cool. Uh, when the class is made, we're gonna set the attempts to negative one, just like we use for the menu down here. And you know, well, it's less than one because we're not gonna simulate nothing, duh. We're gonna then take their integer input again, how many attempts they want to have. So like for the simulation, you know, we might be able to do it 10 times before we get bored, as I said earlier, but the computer can do it like, you know, 5,000 times, then, then it gives up because it gets a bit bored. Python's, Python's like that. Anyway, we store the attempts. Well, we're gonna have mean scores and count. We have this for when we display it on a graph at the end to see our results. And then now we have to go and actually write the simulation logic. Okay, so here's a simulation logic. To actually use this, we're gonna to have to import NumPy. So at the top of the file, I'm just gonna go, gonna import NumPy as NP. And then down here, this is happy, we can use NumPy. And what we're doing here, I'm just gonna quickly explain it. So we're gonna go through all of the attempts that they want. So if they wanna do 5,000 attempts, we do it that many times. We're then gonna initialize the scores array. And inside each of those attempts, we're actually gonna run it that many times, I. And that's so that we can actually see the results of running it once, running it twice, running it three times, running it four, so that we can display on the graph how much better it is the more you run it. So for example, if you're doing a coin flip 50-50 and you do it four times, for example, well, you're not actually gonna win 50% of the time. You can, but it's not very likely um, in the sense that when you have a percentage chance to do something, a fixed percentage, the more you do it, the like more you're gonna get that percentage. So if we have a 33% chance to win um, and we do it 10 times, it probably won't be 33%, but if we do it 5,000 times, it'll be pretty damn close. So that's why we're doing it a lot of times, a lot of recursive times, but it's fine because computers are fast and we're not gonna do it too many times. I mean, it's up to you how, how long you wanna leave it. But anyway, um, we're gonna append to the list the result of taking a turn. Now we haven't written take turn yet. I mean, one of them Python doesn't even care. You know, there's no IDE thing telling us, oh, you haven't written this yet. I'm so used to using C sharp, but anyway. Um, then once we're done, we're actually gonna append to an array of mean scores, the mean score, the MP mean of the score, yeah. And then we're gonna um, also append I, and that's so that when we display the graph, we can have the X axis values going, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, up to, you know, 5,000, whatever you want. We need every single individual X value um, to plot it on the graph. And then these are the Y values here. And then we displayed the results, which we also haven't written the function for. But anyway, this is the simulate function. Okay, so the normal simulation I'm gonna show you is what happens when you don't change, okay? When you don't change, you just pick a random number and then the computer is gonna pick a random number. That's the right answer. So this is gonna be the right answer. And that's gonna be my guess. It's just a random number between zero and two because you know you count from two on computers. And then you win if your guess is the correct one and you lose otherwise. And we return one or zero based on if we win or if we lose. Now, obviously we need to know what rand int is. It's from the random library. So we're gonna say up here uh, from random import rand int. So now we can get a random integer, cool. Okay, so that's how you take a turn for when you don't change your answer. That's just when you stay. And we're also gonna to wanna to define how to display our results like we did here, so let's do that now. And finally, to actually display our results on a graph, we're gonna to want to use a library called mathplotlib, the math plotting library. Uh, we only wanna use one function from it, so we can just import that one function, that's gonna be simple. So we're just gonna say uh, import mathplotlib.pyplot as plt. And down here, PLT is gonna be happy. We can now call plot. It'll take a bit for the uh, IntelliSense to catch up, but anyway, um, we're gonna plot on the X, the count, which is gonna be, you know, one, two, three, four, five, up to 5,000. And then the mean scores, so that's gonna be the Y value. And that's gonna show us, you know, how accurate we were, what's our percent win rate, I guess, or chance of getting it right. Um, and then show obviously just displays the graph. So anyway, we have now written the class for doing a normal simulation without changing. And this is what will happen if you just select a random one, they ask, you know, do you wish to change? Do you wish to stick your answer? And you stick, that's what happens when you stay. So now let's actually make that simulation in the menu. Okay, so down in the menu now, we've got it so that if uh, we select one on the menu, we do a normal simulation with this class we just made, we instantiate a new copy of it. If you're used to using C Sharp, this would say a new simulation, but this is Python. And then if we choose three on the menu, we exit, two is currently not available. 
And then we're going to call the simulate function. The reason I've used a class rather than just normal functions is because we're going to have to reuse the logic to do the simulation without, uh, sorry, with changes. Uh, we only want to override one function. We're not going to rewrite the entire thing and, you know, call all the different functions and methods and stuff. We're just going to do it simply with classes. And then, yeah, we're going to simulate it. So let's actually go try this out. So if we look down here, we've got our beautiful UI and we're going to do play without switching. So we're going to select one. How many attempts do we want to have? Well, let's say 2000. 2000 isn't that big of a number. Um, keep in mind, this is recursive. So it's actually, I think, going to be 2000 factorial amount of times it's going to simulate because it's got to, uh, you know, for number one, do it once. Number two, oh, it's already done anyway. Uh, cool. Um, so if we go open this graph up, you'll see we could actually label the axes on here. It doesn't do it automatically. There might be a way to do that, but you can actually do it through here if you want to. You can go label the axes. But anyway, we know this is the count. So we chose 2000, so it's done it 2000 times without changing. And you can see it's at the start when you only do it a few times, you know, it, it could be anywhere, right? As I said, flip a coin a few times, it's not always gonna be 50-50. But as you see, the more we simulate it, the more we do it, the um, range of outcomes actually closes in on, I'm sure if we did a line across this, it would be pretty much here. And that's about, as you see, 0 0.2, 0 0.4. So 0 0.3 is here, 0 0.33, which is a third, is here. Now that's what you'd expect, that's normal, right? You've got three choices, one of them's right, you're gonna get it right a third of the time. But the thing people don't believe is that if you do it um, and you change every time, even when you've been told one's not right, people say, oh, it's 50-50, right? You'd expect it to outcome as 50-50. But I'm gonna to show to you now running the simulation that it's actually gonna be two thirds of the time you win. So in this situation, you should always change your answer. And I can explain it at the end, but we're just gonna write the simulation code for it now. So all we do here when we do the simulation with switches is we make a new class, but we inherit simulation. So all this code is here and we only change what we need to. We're going to redefine the take turn function. And we're going to say yet again, you know, just make a guess and get an actual answer. And then we're going to remove our guess because when they reveal to us the goat or one of the goats, obviously they're not going to reveal to us our own option because it's our own option. So we're going to remove that from the uh, array of possible guesses that we can make our new guess to be. And then we're going to basically say, well, if new guess is zero, so the first thing in the array, is the actual answer, remove the other one and do the opposite way around. What that means is if we um, chose, so this final scenario, the else, is when we did choose the right one. If we started with the right one, they can remove any. So this is just picking a random one in the array. This is going to remove any of the other two because they're both they're both goats. So just get rid of any of them, right? But in this scenario, this is what they're revealing, right? So if if um, new guess is zero is the actual answer, we don't want to reveal um, the actual answer. So we're going to get rid of the other one, and then the other way around, right? So if it's one, I mean, this this logic isn't the best way to do it, but because uh, there's only three options and we remove one, there's only two left. This is you know the easiest way to do it. So. Uh, which are going to remove based on which one it is. So as I said, the person who's running the competition is never going to reveal to you the actual answer. So we don't want to we don't want to reveal that one. But anyway, once we're done, we can then set our guess to the remaining thing in that array. There'll only ever be uh, one thing less left in that array uh, at the end of this because we remove one here and then we remove one here, here or here. So there's always one thing left. That's the final one. That's our new guess. So we're just gonna, now going to pick the last thing that is left after we've made our guess and one has been revealed, we'll pick the other one, the third final one. And then we say, you know, if we win, return one, otherwise return zero. Okay, now we're gonna to need to add that to the menu. So I'm not gonna bother, you know, cutting ahead to this one. We're just gonna simply um, paste in here the LF choice and indent and tabbing is weird. Anyway, so if they choose two, we're gonna make a new simulation with switches. But because it's the same class and they both got a simulate function, we can actually just, you know, do it like this. It's a bit cleaner. Anyway, if we go run the file now, you'll notice if we play with switching, which technically should take longer because there's more logic to run, we're gonna do it 2000 times again to make it fair. You'll notice that instead of homing in on 33% win rate, which is, you know, a third, it's actually gonna home in on 66, or if you round up, 67% win rate. So as you see here, and we open up, this has gone between zero and 0 0.8, should technically go up to one. We can tell it to do that if we want to. Uh, we can say the top is one. Um, but, you know, it never happened. It doesn't matter. The point is, if we take this line across here, it's the same kind of spread, but it homes in on roughly here, which is, you know, if 0 0.7 is here, it's below 0 0.7, it's 0 0.66, right? It, it averages out on 0 0.66. I could probably even print the average if I wanted to. The point is, you know, you'd expect it to be 50% down here, but it isn't. Now, why isn't it? Okay, I, the end of this video is just going to be a quick explanation. Um, if any of you haven't figured it out yet, I mean, go ahead and try and figure it out and then come back. It's kind of like a riddle almost. Um, it makes sense if you think about it hard and long, but most people don't. So the solution. So the solution is that, as we said, 
when you pick randomly at the start, you've got a one in three chance of winning. No, no one, no one declines that, right? One in three chance because you've got three options. One's right, you pick it, done. But why, when you pick afterwards, when you change, is it not 50-50? Because if you've got three options, one's right and two are wrong, but one of those wrong ones has been removed, you're left with a right and a wrong. So it's 50-50, but it's not, it's two thirds. And the reason I explain this to you, uh, I can explain this to you, is because the person who is the host, who is removing, um, or so, well not removing, they're kind of, they are removing, but they're showing you one of the wrong ones, is actually picking only out of the possible wrong ones. So let's put it this way, there's two different scenarios. There's the one where you do start with the winning one, or where you don't. You either pick the winning one originally. Now, how, how often do you pick the original one, the, the winning one originally, sorry? You pick it one in three times, because you've got one in three chance of winning. So there's one in three scenarios in which if you change, you lose. You lose one in three times if you change, because you started with the right one, so you're gonna change to a wrong one. That, that only happens one in three times. Whereas if you start with a wrong one and you change, you win because they've revealed one of the wrong ones, you've picked one of the wrong ones, but you're changing, the only one left is the right one. And that happens two thirds of the time, because two thirds of the time you start with the wrong one. Now that might sound really obvious, and I'm hoping you guys get that, but a lot of people don't think about that, and you can actually, you know, kind of trick people with this, you could say, you know, let's have a little game of this, um, you know, you can try it first and I'll try it, and, or you can just try and convince someone that it's two thirds. I mean, you could also bet on things saying, you know, you, your odds are pretty good. You know, two, two out of three is a pretty good odds, pretty good odds for betting if you want to bet with someone. Uh, I'm not, not, uh, not, you know, encouraging gambling, but, uh, you know, it's pretty funny just as like a little game or a little uh, party trick you can use. Because, um, you know, you do win two thirds of the time. Don't, don't expect to win every time unless you're magic or something. But anyway, yeah, I thought this was just a cool idea. I'm going to put this code on my GitHub page or just in the paste pin below. I mean, it's just one file. Um, you guys can get access to this. You can mess around with it, do what you want, have some fun with it, show it to people, you know, uh, run both simulations at once and get the two graphs open up so you can compare them side by side or take screenshots or whatever you want. Uh, I hope you guys like this video. It was less of a tutorial, more of a quick, like, you know, this is something I made the other day and I hope you guys are interested in it. I know you're all nerds like me so you might be interested in this kind of thing if you've got any more video suggestions leave them below obviously channels nearly at 10k help me get there it'd mean a lot uh but yeah if you like this video then leave a like and subscribe i'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching peace